Thank you for joining us now as the federal government prepares to completely deregulate the downstream sector of the Nigerian oil and gas industry in the coming month. Stakeholders in the sector have told Nigerians to be ready to pay as much as 750 naira per litre of petrol at filling stations. This was the high point of stakeholders' interventions during an online workshop organized by industry stakeholders in collaboration with the African Refiners and Distributors Association. These stakeholders include representatives of the African Refiners and Distributors Association, major oil marketers, Association of Nigeria, Mormon, uh, Depot and Petroleum Products Marketers Association of Nigeria, Dapman, and Independent Petroleum Marketers Association of Nigeria, Ipman, amongst other. Well, according to them, the government must put measures in place to address the expected impact on the economy. But we ask, what are the preparations on ground for implementation ahead of the June deadline? So let's get talking now. Shall we? Vincent Oshoma, Head Capital Market Interstate Securities, joins us now uh, via the telephone. Thank you for joining us, uh, Vincent. We appreciate your time. Uh, so, uh, talk to us. What is your position on the expected removal of um, or expected impact uh, of uh, subsidy removal by June this year uh, with regards to implications on the economy? Because some stakeholders, right? Uh, some stakeholders in the industry worry that the price may rise to 750 naira per liter. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Yeah, good morning. The issue of removal of subsidy is something that has been delayed for far too long. Mm -hmm. And it continues to have implication on our budget and also government revenue and government spending. So, as expected, Everybody, a lot of persons are clamoring for its removal so that the savings from the removal can be well spent on more productive activities because currently we are subsidizing consumption when we are fully really subsidizing production. So the plan removal, though it was supposed to have been completed last year, will be passing on the PI, the Children Industry Act, which was postponed to this year. And so it's expected that it will be removed. And even the president elect has mentioned the fact that he's going to remove it, irrespective of what people think because of the benefit is expected to bring on the people and the economy. So it's something that is, but it has implications, like you mentioned, mm. it appears that it will lead to an increase in the cost of petroleum products and that will also have impact on inflation. And in, as that been uh, advised, as they have been promoted, is the fact that it is, a, it is good that we remove it, but you have to look at the implication, especially for the common man, for the average Nigerian. Because subsidy is not a bad thing, but what are you subsidizing? Are you subsidizing the less privileged? Are you subsidizing production or you are subsidizing consumption? So government has to put in place a system whereby those that actually need this subsidy before can take advantage of it. So in that let for the government on the system they want to There was a talk that they talked about uh, giving Nigerians uh, 5,000 uh, uh, as a result of the removal. I think that is something that is subject that is. Uh, uh, open to abuse, it can easily be abused like a subsidy. Subsidy was supposed to be a stopgap, but at the end of the day, we refuse to do the necessary thing and it has become the, the bottleneck, a uh, common issue, a national issue. So I think the major thing is to look at ways of subsidizing transportation because the major impact is in the area that you have major impact on the people is the area of transportation because once we increase or uh, remove subsidy and petroleum products start sell at uh, market price. Transportation costs will definitely increase. So, mm. if you subsidize the public transportation, I don't think it will have much impact on the people. And also, look at the small businesses. Look at ways of subsidizing small businesses. I don't think it will have much impact on them. But the challenge is the absence of records in our system, whereby we don't really have the records of people that are operating in the, because it's largely in the informal sector, in this uh, the transport system and also the small business. We don't have this record. So, it will be difficult for us to get. Talk more a little. We'll talk a little bit more on that later, uh, especially on the impact of uh, removal on the economy. You also talk about measures that need to be put in place. But 
Uh, let's talk about this. Recently, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zain Abatment, recently uh, said that it will end the wasteful petrol subsidy regime before the end of President Muhammad Buhari's tenure on May 29, 2023. So what do we make of this? Uh, does this suggest that uh, this administration may implement the subsidy removal before wrapping of their tenure as against the June deadline? So it based on budget allocation, it will end with the administration because you only have subsidy budget allocation for subsidy in the budget in June. So it's still going to be into the new administration. It's going to end with the uh, administration because based on the budget projection, there's cover for subsidy in June. So after June, there is no allocation. There's no room for subsidy in the budget. I know it is not the government that is paying for it. They have to pay it one way or the other. So that's why it's saying that it will end with this administration. I remember it was supposed to have been implemented last year when the PRA was assented to by the president. The sports the petroleum industry was assented to by the became PRA. But the president, because it looked at the impact it will have on the people and because they have now looked at the uh, what to do with respect to reducing the impact, it postponed it in June this year. So by June, based on uh, the uh, agreement in the government, uh, the process of the budget is expected to have elapsed. So it now depends on the new administration, what they are going to do with it. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned, the president-elect has already mentioned the fact that he's going to remove it. But how soon he's going to remove it, we can't say until mm he's -hmm. one but, but in, in fact, if the fact on ground is that, yes, um, like you said, perhaps they might remove it uh, before. But here is the thing, that by the time they'll be wrapping up their tenure, at that time, implementation has not started. So how do you reconcile this to uh, uh, thought now, uh, that the wasteful spending is going to end with this administration? But eventually it, it will be removed in the next administration that means that the headache will be transferred to the next administration so eventually it's going to be the next administration that will uh, take off from there so do you think it should be implemented just before this administration wrap up or it should be left uh, maybe for the next administration the main thing that it depends it depends on them it depends on the, them. They have already given made their statement that they, it will end, and it now depends on what the incoming administration. And I, I, I quite understand the fears you are expressing the issues because if the new administration comes in, it needs time to actually take some decisions and to put measures in place. It now has to do with the transition. Process. It's a good thing that the president elect is on the same party with the current president. So I think there should be some level of understanding. Making exposing some things so that as the new president elect is coming in, he already knows what to do. So, as he this morning, he can make some pronouncements with based on the understanding in the respect of the Andorra process because transition mm. process is you don't wait, don't have to wait until that day. He can be he's being briefed on what is happening and also he will meet with his own team and make some decision because subsidy is a major decision that has to be made because beyond the economic decision, there is a political decision that has to be made. Which current administration postponed because of mm. the election. Mm. Uh, so Talking about, the, new, okay. ad, the oh. new administration needs to make that decision as quickly as possible. And one thing that is also open to the new administration, which you cannot rule out, is the fact that the new administration may look at the situation of things and decide to further postpone this. That is his own decision because he, once he sworn in as a president on May 29, he has the power to make the decision. So he will decide, can decide to postpone it. But what I will expect is that the transition process starts uh, on as quickly as possible and the briefing the, in terms of the issues that needs to be addressed. The president elect is aware of them. So when he already has a decision in place and once it's morning, he starts making those decisions, starts making those pronouncements. I think uh, that is what is expected. It now depends on what happens. But he definitely has to make the decision because the current administration already made it clear that. It's based on the uh, budget allocation. There will mm. be subsidy after June. Mm. Like you rightly pointed out, this is about political decision, right? But what some, you know, some stakeholders are saying that th there are no 
concrete plans or measures in place now ahead of the implementation um, you know by june if that is to take place in the next administration so that means we, we need to start having we need to have some measures in place now so they are looking at some some of the suggestions they are putting on table um ahead of june deadline first some of them are saying look they want the federal government to channel savings to provision of palliative for masses I'm talking about palliative measures secondly uh they are also talking about to put measures in place to prosecute persons involved in oil theft because the proceed actually can be you know diverted or well, the proceed of oil theft really is impacting on the revenue generation of the federal government so they are looking at how to prosecute um, those who are involved in oil theft for treason and also to do more to curtail um, you know oil saboteurs so which is key for you amongst these uh, expectations are you talking about which is key between uh, the removal of subsidy and also... Which is, uh, in terms of measures put in place, some of the stakeholders are saying they haven't seen any concrete measures put in place by this administration. If um, June deadline implementation is to happen, so that's what they are saying. So And they are making suggestions, uh, they saying that first, you need to start, you know, with uh, palliative measures. For some of the sales of the oil and all of that, put that, divert that proceed into palliative measures such that those palliative can be used, you know, to address or to cushion the impact of the uh, subsidy removal. So, but they said they have not seen any of those measures in place. How feasible is this? If these measures are not in place, how do you think that will happen, uh, you know, by June? Yes, I quite, I quite agree with you. I quite agree with you. We, there are no real measures put in place, and that we upset the removal. And you know, one of the things, what I, what I think, one of the issues that they are having, because they keep talking about throwing out different measures. I think the issue is agreeing at the, uh, picking a measure, uh, a, a kind of policy that will be accepted. Because this subsidy issue involves not just the federal government, it involves the state government. Because the money is being sourced from the federation accounts, for right. revenue accounts. Mm -hmm. So I think he's agreeing to, uh, with some, because once this is, is they are moving from this uh, general subsidy to some a new measure, the states have their own, they have to buy, the states have to accept. I think that is one of the reasons that some of the things trying to agree on the measure, because it's only just in public mm -hmm. federal government. You remember what, uh, during uh, uh, the present administration of uh, President Woodrow Jonathan when there was an increase and they were talking about palliative for state. There was this issue of having a, a, an acceptable palliative by the various state government. The state government, they, they were talking of this, putting palliative in place, which we never really saw. I think those are some of the issues. And just like you have expressed here, with the way things are going, we may see subsidy not being removed by June and being extended because the new administration may have to just send an appropriation budget to uh, build. To a budget, uh, budgetary allocation to the National Assembly with respect to the subsidy for the remaining part of the year because there are issues that need to be put in there. Otherwise, you will have a more, you will be moving from one issue to another issue because we have a lot of uh, social economic effects on the people. So there may be a reaction from the people if we don't put measures in place that are relatively acceptable to the people. And like you mentioned, they have not really seen the plans that they are going to convey the plan before the move forward. We have not really seen much discussion uh, because the issue of 5,000 and enough doesn't keep against it. I think they are not going to think of something else. So I think they need something has to definitely have to be done before you can remove the subsidy. Otherwise, the impact will be unbearable on the people. So if this new, if this current administration is not able to put up some of the measures in place and by late 29, they just see each other, the new administration we have the first would adapt the rule to put this measure in place so that they have Okay. So tentatively, tentatively, let's look at the, um, you know, the impact and some of the measures that we need to look at, um, you know, ask or task the government to put in place. You talk about uh, subsidizing transportation earlier, and you also talk about um, um, subsidizing businesses. You know, can you expand it more on that? Uh, because if we talk about transport, um, I mean, how do you do that? Uh, are you going to perhaps 
buy buses and and add i mean get the road busy with the government uh, subsidized uh, transport uh you know transportation uh, buses and all, all that so how are you going to do that that's that's another conversations that uh, people have not really looked at yes yes like i said that is the issue because if you look at uh, the developed countries especially for major cities like when you talk about uh, the uk major cities you have an organized transport system you have an organized transport system mm. that when you want to subsidize uh, transportation you can reach out to the company so they don't have to increase their cost so people will be be taking the public transport system at the same cost, just by the increase in the price of oil. But in Nigeria, where we don't have that, even in major cities like Lagos, in Lagos you have the DRT, but, but we know that a lot of people are leaving the transport is leaving during the informal sector. I think those we need to do more in trying to organize this transport, especially for the major cities and also for interstate transportation system. If you are able to reach out to people involved in this thing and look at, look at something to subsidize their poor uh, consumption, I think it will make them not to increase the price. And so it needs to be done in a be very transparent to reduce uh, any form of abuse or reduce the abuse to a very minimal level because it will be difficult to continue and eliminate abuse. Then you also look at the SMEs because uh, one of the things is that a lot of businesses are still their energy consumption is still from poor. Power consumption, talking about the having salon, the addresses, and the rest, small businesses. You also look at ways of subsidizing them in respect of their energy consumption because they don't get power. So, if you put those measures in place, it will definitely reduce the impact it will have on the system we have on the phone because the major area it has to be great is for transportation and also for small businesses. Other businesses, maybe the big businesses, will have a way of coping. Like if you look at the increase in diesel, a lot of businesses are coping. This, so it's not easy, but it will have more impact on the poor. Those at the lower level than those at the higher level. They have, they can absorb it, but the lower, the, the, those at the lower end of the society cannot absorb it. So that's why I said they need to look for a way. Any measure you want to put in place is to take care of those at the lower end of the society. Can be a major way to reduce the impact. Mm. Well, just a quick one before I allow you to go, then you can make your final thought. Um, stakeholders' expectation on subsidy revolver, perhaps be able to put that on the screen. Uh, first, they are saying Nigeria should brace up. They might be they, that the subsidy removal will affect the prices of pump uh, price, and that could go as high as 750. We could have that on the screen for you. Uh, we will do that if possible. 750 naira per liter when subsidy is eventually removed. Secondly, projected pump price likely to, you know, to hit 500 naira per liter. Now, thirdly, expect government to channel savings to provision of palliatives for masses and of course one government to try all your things for reasons and finally uh government they say government is not doing enough to curtail oil servitors these are some of the expectations from these stakeholders but give us your final thought on the subsidy issue uh just before we, we go how much do you think you know an average um how significantly do you think that will affect household I think we're getting um, a bit disturbed with that <laughs> background. I, I don't know. Uh, but let's see if we can uh, get this uh, conversation, uh, you know, to a close. So how much do you think um, or significantly do you think this will affect household spending? Because how many average Nigerians can go to petrol filling station and say, okay, I want to buy one liter at the rate of 750 naira or at worst, maybe... 500 naira so that's the question uh really so talk to us uh give us your uh, parting shot to us uh, so we'll uh, close down on this uh, conversation yes like uh, like i mentioned beyond the price of petroleum products when subsidy is removed the main focus should not be the price the main mm. focus is the impact is we have on the poor and the measures being taken to reduce that impact because if you have if you reduce the impact, like I mentioned, the issue of transportation, if you do something about the impact, because when you remove subsidy and fuel is selling, even is selling at Twitter and it has an impact on each other, if you do something about reducing the impact that you have on transportation by subsidizing 
transportation for those in that sector. I don't think there will be much reaction. Those mm. that cannot afford it, we now think of taking public transportation system and if you look for growth in government organized government will also do something for major cities, organizing public transportation system in major cities. I think it will push government to do that. So that people like in developed countries, a lot of persons have the option. Do I want to drive my car or I want to take it in public transport system? And you have more better organized transport system that people can take. You don't have to worry about their car. So that is the major thing. The second thing is the issue of power for small business because they get their power themselves and it is from poor. So that is what the area that has to be focused on. The fact you mentioned about the oil test, yes, there have been some effort in there because you look at the current daily production. We, you know, the time around September or so, we are lower than, uh, uh, we are at less than 1 uh, million barrels per day. But currently, we are around 1.3 million barrels per day. That means some effort that we take. We need more effort to solve the issue of oil test. And the good thing, the incoming administration is something that is big on talking about doing something about oil test and increasing the oil production. I think these are areas that we have to think about. Unfortunately, as a random, is the fact that this administration is one year. There is no real motivation for them to do a lot of things. Mm. So a lot of focus will be on the incoming administration. And those are the things everybody has been talking about. There's a lot of problems for the incoming administration to take care of, to solve. Which yes, this yes. Let's leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. Vincent Oshoma is the oh my goodness. <laughs> Vincent Oshoma is the head capital market interstate securities. So we just have to let you go uh and face today. Have a great day ahead. Well, still to come after the break. Well, we head to the international market as we look at the the global oil market and of course the equities market across the globe. We're back in a moment. Please stay with us. <laughs>